chapter 27. Share yours with them. If somebody don't have a Bible, I want to show you something this morning. Um, this is the closest thing you can find to a hurricane hitting in the Bible. And I'm going to talk about that hurricane this morning that everybody in the country is talking about anyway and show you what the Bible says about it. What is a hurricane? Where does it come from? Why? What's the purpose? That type of thing. It's in the Bible just like everything else. In the Bible, in Acts chapter 7, they were on this ship and this big, huge storm came up. And, and the Bible said that verse 14, it said, uh, not long after there arose against it, that's the ship, a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon. They even had names for them back then. Isn't that something? Somebody said, how do hurricanes get names? You know, they used to call them all female. And some of the women got jealous and mad and made them started calling half of men, every other one. But Nancy Reagan said way back there that, that the reason they call hurricanes after women was because a, uh, you never know how strong a woman is till she's in hot water. And that's true. That's true. And they'll surprise you, won't they? They're very strong. Now, uh, but this one had a name. And verse 15, the ship was caught. We could not bear up into the wind. We let her drive. That's the ship. Now, she hit the rocks. There was also a lot of rain with this wind. Look at 28 and verse number 2. It said, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. This is chapter 28 and verse 2. For they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. So you had wind and rain. There's three things when they get out of control, you better run. Wind, water, and fire. Our country's getting all three of them this morning. Paul here was in a storm. It was a big one. It was a bad one. It was a bold one. It was a lot of wind and a lot of rain. No doubt a hurricane. They, they, these, uh, this name that I gave you a minute ago, Eurocladon or Eurocladon, however you pronounce it, would be like a cyclone. It was a northeast wind that was in the Mediterranean, still has it, in the fall or winter. And now they call them Levanters, Lavenders. Same wind today. That whips around there. You ever wonder why California don't have hurricanes? But they all come down there in that one section, right over that Bermuda Triangle. Uh, we'll talk about that some other time. But this was a bad one. Now, just a little background about hurricanes, since that's all you've heard for the past week. What creates a hurricane is the water has to be, I think, right about 80 degrees. That's very warm. And then, as that happens, uh, water, the warm water creates a, sort of like a funnel where the clouds evaporate in water, and it goes up to about 50,000 or 40-something thousand feet by cloud. Then when it gets up there, the earth rotating puts a twist on it and gets it spinning. They, that's what they say. A real hurricane lifts as much as 60 million tons of water out of the ocean. There's more power in a hurricane uh, in 10 seconds than the entire United States uses in a year. That's some power. That's why, you, that's why they call them cyclone in Haiti. When I was in Haiti uh, years ago, they... Everything was destroyed. And there was all saying the cyclone, the cyclone. That's what they call it, cyclone. And it was a terrible one that hit those people. The deadliest hurricane to ever hit the United States was September the 8th, 1900. There was 8 to 15 foot high waves 
It was in Galveston, Texas. Nearly 8,000 people were killed. But you got to remember, they didn't have warnings like we got now. We got warnings now. They didn't know it till like the day of or the day before that it was coming back in 1900. So they had no way of, of getting out of the way. We've got plenty of warning now, like Jesus told the hypocrites in Matthew when he said, you see the sky lowering and you can't discern the signs of the times. We'll mention that again in a minute. In 1928, the hurricane that hit Okeechobee, 3,500 people were killed. And then in 2005, Katrina. That happened down there in New Orleans, and a lot of that wasn't just the hurricane. It was when that levee broke and all that water came up. There have been three Category 5 hurricanes uh, that hit, in, it hit the United States. One of them was in 1935, I mentioned. Uh, one of them was 1900. Uh, I don't know, and, uh, Camille, Camille, 1969, and then in Dade, Florida, in 1992. This one now that we're seeing is not a, a five no more and probably won't even be a, a, about a three when it finally does hit. That's not nothing to laugh at, though. Let's think about that for a minute and talk about storms. Why does God allow storms? What is storm a picture of? Now, if you've been saved any time at all, you know that, that the storms are a picture of times that we go through in our life. How many times have you heard people come to church and they say, boy, pray for me, I'm really going through a storm. And uh, I mean, they're perfectly healthy and the sun's out. You know what they mean? They're going through some very hard times. We all go through storms of life in our life. And... I want you to look at Acts 27 again, and my key verse this morning is verse 23. Paul stood up after a long abstinence, and he said this. He said, I want y'all to just chill out now, verse 23, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, that was the Lord Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sir, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be, even it was told me. You know what Paul said? I mean, that ship was going like this and going like that, and they were screaming for dear life, and they all thought they was going to die. And Paul had been hid back there for a while, and about that time he stepped there and he said, All right, nothing to worry about. Everything's going to be all right. They said, how do you know? He said, the angel of God stood by me, stood right by me and said, we're going to make it. Nobody's going to die. We're going to get through this thing. Everybody just, you know, and brother, that's exactly what happened. And I'm telling you, I'm preaching this morning on the subject, when the storms of life are raging, stand by me. I, Mom used to sing that song a long time ago. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. I want to say this morning, I've been through some storms in my life. I've, I've been through some. I'm telling you, I've been through some. I've been down so far as you couldn't look up and see the bottom. But through every single one of them, there was the Lord stood by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. One of the good things about serving God is you might have to give up some fun that other people enjoy. You might not get to go to their parties and their clubs and all that junk they ain't worth going to. No way. You might not get to go do some of the things that the worldly people do. But I'm going to tell you, brother, when the chips are down and the wind is a-blowing and the clouds are dark, you'll see somebody will just slip up beside you and say, everything's going to be all right. I don't know what kind of storm you might be going through today. Uh, we, we got people in here going through uh, marital storms. We got people going through here going through uh, financial storms. We got people here going through physical storms. Uh, ma'am, Sandy over there just buried her dad at a funeral yesterday. That's a storm of life. We have other people here this morning. Uh, Miss Sherry at the hospital with her mother. That's a storm. And and physically, mentally, spiritually, and all kinds. Let's talk about storms this morning. And I want to give you just three things quickly. Number one. You know what the storms of life will teach you? The storms of life teach you that you realize that God's in control. 
and you're not really in control of anything. Boy, we don't like that. Us humans, there's something in our nature that we like to think we got everything figured out and we got it together and we're safe. We build a wall around us. We, we build a... But every once in a while, God will let a storm come through to let you realize you ain't in charge. You know what the entire government of, North, of the United States can do about that storm? Nothing. All you can do is get out of the way, brother. I mean, you, you can't stop it. I'll say more about that in a minute. You realize God is in control. And I'm glad that bad, bad, bad weather reminds us we're really not in control of anything. I mean, you think, now I'm going to exercise. I'm going to stay healthy. I've got money in the bank in case this happens. I've got this. About that time the sky gets black and the trees start bending up. You'll realize, buddy, uh, that God is in control. God is keeping your heart beating, buddy. Uh, there was a man on the Titanic. Uh, they said uh, when them people started going down, you know what they realized? They started playing gospel songs. People started praying. They realized God was in control. Isn't it strange? I, I was thinking about this yesterday. Uh, I was up in Maryland. I was in the uh, study in the motel before church, and I was studying about this. And uh, it, it, it's so strange that uh, right now, Right now, while me and you sitting here, and I look out there, and the trees ain't even moving, and the sun's out, and it's an absolutely beautiful day out here today. And we're sitting in here in an air-conditioned building. Most of you done eat at least once today, and we'll have three or four more before the day is over. Most of you uh, have, have, have nice clothes on. You took a shower you had electricity this morning. Right now, we're sitting here just enjoying this beautiful Sunday morning. And right now, there are people down the road that are crying. That are crying. There may have been some lost their lives already while we're at church right now and today. Right now. And you know what that tells me? That tells me that sometimes things can be going good in your life and everything's going great and you're building faith. You don't know what that person right beside you may be going through. It may be going through a terrible storm. They may be ready to blow their brains out. They may, listen, people, right now. Now, don't you see them people trying to get out there on the interstate? I'd have waited if I'd have been them. I'd have waited. I'd have waited to see what I was going to do. If I was on that side, if I was on that side, I'd have probably hunkered down somewhere. But uh, they 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 got stuck on the interstate and they were running out of gas and they had to leave their their car sitting on the side of the interstate and they had I don't know if it was some a truck going up through down there helping people like that and people are put up in motels. There are people crying. There are people praying. There are people uh, maybe right now. Maybe right. now, now, with, with buildings falling on them. Now, that's hard for us to believe. Look out there. You couldn't look out there and think, it's bad weather, would you? If you looked out there, you'd think, that's a beautiful day. Hard to believe right now what some people's going through. And I'm telling you right now, right now, right now, there's people in the hospital that, that, are, that are crying, just lost a loved one. Right now, while me and you are sitting here. Right now. You know why me and you ain't in the storm? It's just not our time yet. They said this man one time went into this, this preacher went in one time, he went in uh, uh, back years ago when they had that radar screen in the, in the uh, place, the control tower at a small airport. And this guy had this screen up there and it was showing the air, the, the planes. And there was a big storm going across there. If you ever been up in an airplane, you can get up above them things, man. You get up there in the sky, you go high enough, sky's blue all the time. And you look down on that storm. And that preacher said, he said he looked out there and he said that controller had some of them storm planes below the storm. He had some of them planes above the storm and he had some of them planes in the storm. And he's sitting right there staying in touch with all three of them. He said he liked to shout his head off. When he seen that, he thought, you know what? God's up there in heaven this morning. He's got the screen. He's running the show. He's got some folks above the storm. Hallelujah. I like it when I'm above the storm. He's got some folks below the storm. That's second best. But he's got some in the storm. And I've been there too. But I'm telling you, the good thing is he's in control. He's in control. He's running this universe. I wonder what these mega church uh, social gospel, Bible-denying preachers think about this hurricane. 
They don't believe God would do anything bad to people. They say that. They say, no, that, do you believe that comes from the devil? The devil don't control the weather, people, according to the Bible. He might can tinker in it once in a while if God allows it. But you can read that Bible from front to back. God's, let me show you a verse of Scripture. Take your Bible and turn to Ezekiel just a minute. Let's just, just a second. I don't usually do this. Let me show you a verse. I've done a lot of studying on storms yesterday. And man, I marked all kinds of verses. And it's like everything else. The more you study it, the more you realize the Bible says about it. Let me show you a verse of Scripture. And it's Ezekiel 13. And uh, you'll look at it with me if you will. Please let me show you this right quickly. These emergent church social gospel preachers probably say, what do they say? They say, I don't believe God ever, ever is mean. God's not, he wouldn't hurt nobody. Well, I don't know what Bible you've been reading, but it ain't this one. That's not the God of the Bible. Look here in Ezekiel 13, 13, the King James Bible. Ezekiel 13, 13, therefore thus saith who? Therefore thus saith who? The Lord. I will even rend it. He's talking about a city with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower. That's a storm surge. In my anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. That's a prophecy in the Bible, and it's all the way through the Bible. You know the biggest storm's ever been? Noah's, brother, is a category 480. <laughs> That was a whopper. I'm telling you, brother. Lord, have mercy. You talk about surge over top of Mount Mitchell. That's why there's fish fossils on top of Mount, all the mountains in the world. There was water up there one time. You realize God is in control. Number two, let me learn this since this morning. Let me learn you something. That's what they used to say out in the country. Number two, you realize in a storm what's really important. Ain't that right? Buddy, when the storm hits, you realize what really matters. Now, the Bible even said that. In verse 19 of that chapter, it said the third day they threw out the tackling of the ship. Do you know what tackling is? It's like ropes and pulleys and and stuff that they, they said, listen, we're going to drown. We got to get rid of everything on this boat. And they picked that stuff up and threw it in the water. They said, we didn't really need this. Our lives are more important than this. I like, I was listening to, uh, I watched a little bit of the news the other day, and the governor of Florida, come on, he, he talked with some good sense. That guy did. I don't, I don't know anything about him, but he said some good things. He, uh, he said, human life is our main concern. He said, uh, he was telling people to get out, you know, and heed the warnings and stuff like that. And he said, human life's the main concern. He said, we can help you build your house, but we can't put your life back once you've lost it. And you know what? When a storm comes, people realize what's really important. You know what them people got? Listen, when they said get out, a hurricane's coming, they didn't go in there and take the china cabinet and put it on, in the back of the truck and go in there and take the microwave. You know what they got? They didn't take that stuff and leave Mamma in the den. I hope. Some reprobates probably did something like that. I'm telling you, brother, you know what they did? They said, you know what's important? My wife, my kids, my mom, my dad that's living with us. That's what's really important. You know what? They didn't say, well, I forgot my lottery tickets and I don't want to go over the year and I, I got that and, and, my, and I want those. I, I was going to go to the club tonight. They didn't go to no club. They said, we're getting out of town, man. They realized what's really important. When the Titanic went down, let me tell you something, people. When the Titanic went down, they said there was one of them men, let, there was a whole box of jewelry and stuff there and he left it alone and picked up three oranges. He picked up three oranges. He's almost starved to death. Because when it comes right down to it, I don't care how much money you got, you can't eat it. And it's going to come a time when it's worth nothing and all that's going to matter is what's your family. 
That's why I always told my girls, they're all sitting over there this morning. My sister's here this morning, Debbie, over there, and, her, and, and Sean and Amy. Oh, y'all, I'm glad y'all are here today. We've been through some storms. Me and my sister, they're the only two left in my immediate family. Our whole family went through an absolute tsunami from 1988 to 1990. You've heard me tell about it. My oldest sister Sandy died with cancer. My dad died with a heart attack. Six months later I, my mom, I, we went, me and her both went through personal troubles and, and I'm telling you this morning, brother, you talk about a storm. It was dark. It was dark. And you know what we realize when it gets dark like that? I mean, it, it's not a pair of shoes that matters. It's not uh, if, is your grass pretty or you got pretty flowers in the yard? It's you get a hold of your brothers and your sisters and your kids and you all hug each other and pray. That's all that really matters. And the time's going to come when the storm hits your life. God allows to show you what's really important. There is no education like trouble. None. Number three, and this will be last. I said first, you realize God's in control. You know where that thing will go? It'll go where God tells it to. They said it's going to Miami. It's going up. Uh, it's going to hit uh, Daytona up that way. Then it went the other way. Nope, it's going that way. The Euro model, the United States model, and all that. You know where it's going to go? Exactly where he says go. You're not in control. Number two, you realize what's really important. What's really important. And number three, you realize you can't stop it. All you can do is prepare. Prepare. The governor come on there the other day, and he, I, listened, I think it was Friday, and he got on and he said, to the residents of Florida, time is running out. I thought, preach it, brother. Preach it, man. Preach it, man. And I'm telling you, it was almost like he was preaching. You know what? You know what? You know what kills me as a preacher? The governor and the weathermen can say storms coming, prepare for it, and people ninety percent of the people listen. And preachers are saying, "Get ready, storms of life are coming, bad days are coming," and people just walk right on like it's never going to happen. And I'm telling you, it's it. It's coming. It's coming. The storms of life are coming your way. If you ain't in one, you'll go through one. If you've been through one, there'll be another. Mark it down. People are literally running from this thing. Running. You know why? Because you can't stop it. The Bible said the sea and the waves will be roaring. Some of them didn't believe here in this story in Acts chapter 27. So the Bible said some of them didn't believe. And Paul said, well, you should have listened to me. You should have listened to me and not sailed. Now here we're out here in a mess, but the Lord stood by me. Now peace is not the absence of storms, but tranquility in the midst of a storm. What does that mean? That means real peace ain't just when everything's right around you. It's got to be right on the inside of you. Man can have peace and, and, and lose his house and job and everything else, still have peace of God inside you. You can have the peace of God. You can have peace with God. You have peace with God's getting your heart right. Peace of God is what God gives you when you live for Him. Paul was prepared. I noticed in that chapter it said after long abstinence. See the waves out here running. Somebody said, "Where's that preacher?" I don't know. I, I think I believe he's back there praying till the Lord give him the answer. He's back there preparing. Now, I'll tell you what you better be doing. You better be preparing. I remember when Mom was real sick, and she stayed at Debbie's. I, I prayed, even before she got sick, I used to say, Lord, get me ready. Get me ready, because that day's coming, and he did. You know what I'm praying now? Lord, get me ready for my day. I want to be ready. I mean, I know I'm saved, but you know what I mean. I don't want to don't be an old bitter old person that hates everything and everybody and miserable and makes everybody else. You don't want to be like that. Prepare, y'all. Let me tell you what's coming. Old age. You are getting older and uglier every day, so most of you. I hate to say that, but don't you say nothing about me, y'all. Some of y'all, Lord, have mercy. 
You know, what you're, you know where you're headed? You're headed for a rest home, sitting there with spit dripping down your jaws. That's where you're headed. You're on your way. Now, you young people, you sit down here. You, now, the Lord might be merciful to you and, and take you out in a heart attack or a car wreck or something, but if not, you're headed for the wheelchair or the hospital bed. Get ready. Never happened to me. Yeah, you better get ready. Time's running out. You're going to die. You're going to get sick. You're going to get old, and you're going to die. Every time you see a wrinkle, that's the Lord saying, you better get ready. Every time you see a gray hair, the Lord's saying, you better get ready. Every time you get up and go, oh, oh. Ah, that's probably nothing. It's something It's the Lord saying, you better get ready. Storm's coming. Storm's coming. You know what I say? Noah prepared. What if Noah hadn't prepared for that storm? Man, I hope when we get to heaven, the Lord will turn a video on on about a thousand foot screen and let us see Noah. I, he probably will. I don't know that he will. I wouldn't doubt it a bit. I say, Lord, could we go back and see that? Sure. Pop. 4D. 510D. Man, it's like you're there. I would like to see how dark the clouds got for that storm, buddy. And it ain't never rained before. You know why Noah was all right? He prepared. Listen, people. Said the old woman one time, she was sitting there reading her Bible. Kid come over to play. Sitting over there reading the Bible. Kid come over to play. He said, why does your grandma read the Bible all the time? He said, I think she's cramming for her finals. And that's why you got to be. You better be getting ready. You better be getting ready. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, you're not ready to die, right? You say, I know what y'all's problem is. You're 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and you think you got your whole life ahead of you. I'm telling you, you better get ready. You better get ready. When my life is in trouble, I want the Lord to stand by me. He always has. I said one time this ship was caught in a storm out at sea. And there's a big ship, and there's a bunch of people that's downstairs, and the captain and everything up here. And they're all scared to death. They're all saying, we're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. This is going to kill us. We're going to die. And one guy said, I'm going up. And he went up the steps and went up on the deck. And when he said he got up there on the deck, there stood the old faithful captain. He said he had his hand on the, on the stern there, and he had a, a, a smile on his face. He said, everything's all right. He said, when I got a glimpse of that captain, I knew we was going to sail right on through. You know who Jesus is? He's the captain of our salvation, people. And you know what? When you're going through storms, just get a good glimpse of him. He's got it. It ain't took him by surprise. He ain't up there wringing his hand, taking aspirin, uh, saying, I didn't know this was going to happen. Got it all under control. And he's got your life. All your problem is getting right and living for him. That's your problem. See, when you're sinning, you're sinning, you think, oh my goodness, I don't know what's going to happen. And every time something bad happens, you think, this is the Lord, I'm getting it. This is the Lord, I'm getting it. But if you'll get your heart right, when the hard time comes, you can say, he'll stand by me. He'll stand by you. Now listen, I'm going to do something different this morning for the invitation. I'm going to have a song. It's a song. Mom used to, I've heard her sing it. Sort of old now, so some of you, these young people, churches, they ain't got no, they wouldn't know a good song if they heard it anyway. Amen. They think it's supposed to sound like Katy Perry to, or something in church now. But this is going to be our invitation this morning. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you right with God this morning? Listen, I've been through some storms, and guess what? I've got more coming. It's hard to believe that you could go out there yesterday or day before yesterday and look and see the beach in Florida and it was pretty and sunny. You think, man, nothing ain't going to happen. Go back the next day. You know what? You could be sitting right here this morning feeling perfectly fine and this time tomorrow being a doctor telling me you've got stage four cancer. Amen. That happens all the time. That's how quick it can go from pretty weather to bad weather. 
You say, well, that sounds awful, preacher. Well, it's, it's a tr my job is to tell you the truth. It ain't if, it's when. It'll be a car wreck, it'll be a heart attack, it'll be man's born to trouble like a spark's fly upward. All you can do is prepare. And I'm going to give you a chance to get in this altar this morning and say, when the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When I go to the hospital, stand by me. When a doctor says it's cancer, and he might, he might. You know, as you start getting older, every, every little old time you hear, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> you know, it scares you because you're a lot smarter than you was when you was young and dumb. It's coming. I want you to bow your head, please. Close your eyes. Father, do what ought to be done right now. I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would help every single person in here today to be ready for the storm. And Lord, we pray for them people down yonder, them that's on the interstate, them that's screaming, hollering, cussing, mad, broke, soaking wet, maybe already injured, maybe some have already been killed, I don't know. God, please, have mercy on our country. I believe you've already answered a lot of people's prayers because it could have been a lot worse. Oh, God, help us, we pray. Right now, our heads are still bowed and eyes are closed. And I'm going to ask you a question, and we're going to have a song. And while we have this song, I wonder if you just meet me here in this altar, and let's pray for the people in Florida and upstate, or, or southern, south part of Georgia, and the western part of Tennessee. Well, let's pray for them that's going through the storm. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Stand. Yeah. We're going to pray for them people down there. They sure need it. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life Stand by me When the world is tossing me Like a ship upon the sea Thou who rule wind and water Stand by me So stand by, by me. Can you say that? Pray that prayer meeting this morning. Stand by me, Lord. Stand by me. You know what Paul said? He said, "There's good by me this night." Lord, the angel of the Lord. He'll you know stand by you when you're at the funeral home.
Stand by me, Lord. Stand by me. Talk to somebody who can hear. Write to somebody who can read. That's supposed to be cute or something? That's not as dumb as boys going in girls' bathroom, but we're, we're, we're living in a nation of crazy people. They just think you think positive and everything will be all right. Guess what? It ain't. It ain't. Amen. 